keep you updated on the capital and financial markets, here is a recap of what happened. Following the launch of the Economy Madani by the Prime Minister and Finance Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, the Securities Commission Malaysia last week held its annual industry dialogue to discuss and deliberate on key areas to further develop and grow the capital market. The annual SC Industry Dialogue saw 60 capital market industry leaders and senior representatives sharing ideas and proposals as well as highlighting issues and challenges over a range of topics under the three broad areas of investment opportunities, funding inclusivity and market reforms in the capital market. These include strengthening our capital market promotional efforts to, among others, build a stronger domestic issuer pipeline, create greater market vibrancy, widen the pool of investors, as well as intensifying efforts relating to leverage on the sustainability agenda and Malaysia's leadership in Islamic capital market. Malaysia needs more young people to invest in the capital market to ensure that it remains vibrant, said Securities Commission Malaysia Chairman Datuk Seri Dr. Awang Adik Hussein. So far, he said investors aged 45 and below only constitute 7.0% of total investors in the stock market, and the number of those in the 20 to 30 age bracket is expected to be even lower. He noted that in the stockbroking industry, for instance, most remissiers are aged 50 and above. The capital market industry needs an injection of new blood, both as employees as well as investors. India's securities regulator has introduced a new rule requiring all portfolio managers to conduct and submit annual performance audits. The managers will have to submit the audit reports to the Securities and Exchange Board of India within 60 days of the end of a financial year. In order to bring uniformity, SEBI has decided to standardize the way portfolio managers audit performance data on an annual basis. They are required to consider all clients' portfolios managed, clients of both discretionary and non-discretionary portfolio management services. For the purpose of audit of firm-level performance data, the regulator says in a circular. The standardized terms of reference for the audit will be decided by the Association of Portfolio Managers in India. The Financial Conduct Authority has slammed fund managers for refusing to cut fees despite their poor performance. The financial regulator said that many firms were still putting profitability first and ignoring evidence suggesting they should cut their fees, despite improving their value assessments. None of the firms assessed by the FCA in its fund manager review had reduced fees following poor performance. Net inflows into China's mutual fund market surged 321% to 1.22 trillion yuan in the second quarter from 291 billion yuan in the first three months of the year, driven by bond funds, according to Shanghai-based investment consulting firm IIC Analytics. It was the second consecutive gain after a 748 billion yuan outflow in the fourth quarter of last year and boosted mutual fund assets to 27.5 trillion yuan as of June. That was up from 25.9 trillion yuan in March and 25.2 trillion yuan in December 2022. Investors have become defensive and shifted their investments to less risky bond funds and money market funds, IIC Analytics says in a report on 9 August. FIMM is pleased to announce the release of its annual report 2022 with the theme, In the Grand Scheme of Things. Visit FIMM's official website to download a digital copy. The latest e-zine is now available for download at FIMM's official website. This edition features articles on the usage of social media for investment marketing, an introduction to vulnerable investors as well as the recent Global Money Week. Download your copy today and stay informed about the latest developments in the industry. This has been the FIMM TV Weekly Recap. Be informed, stay updated. Be sure to like, share and subscribe.